What's going on, my friends? Oh, I got to start this episode off with a giant hat throw, my friends, because we've got an exciting episode. We've got a man for all of you who have been saying, where's that manpower, right? Where's that manpower up in here? Well, <laughs> we're about to bring that manpower here this morning. Also, where's that, where's that man living the life of his dreams through the power of digital marketing? <laughs> We've got you covered this morning. We've got you coming all the way, my friends, from Vietnam, my friend. Well, my soon-to-be new friend. I've actually never talked to him before. The very first words, except I did say behind the scenes, you're ready to rock, brother. And he said, yes, absolutely. You'll be hearing this conversation for the very first time. I'll be getting to know Tommy just as you're getting to know Tommy. Remember, all of our guests on Wake Up Legendary are just students here, learners, uh, clients of Legendary Marketer who've gone through our curriculum, who are either adding to their existing digital marketing knowledge or many who are learning these skills and strategies and business models for the very first time. And we've invited them on. We have different ways of tracking the success of our clients. Invite them on to the show to say, hey, would you like to share a little bit of your story, your experience with Legendary Marketer, and how you're using these strategies in your life and business? And thankfully, this morning, we have the man, the myth, the soon-to-be legend, Tommy, on with us, coming all the way from Vietnam. Brother, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Can I just start by saying that it's an honor to be here? I honestly used to watch this show every single morning when I, I was like working from home and I was, it just gave me so much like inspiration. And then I was, I was in, I'm pretty sure I was like in a pub and in Vietnam and I got your email saying, would you like to be on the show? And I, the first thing I did was I like, showed my girlfriend, I was like, they want us to be on the show. And now I'm here. It's actually surreal. So it's an absolute honor to be here talking to you, Dave. Man, my friend, I'm just gonna, I need to, hold on a second. That's a two hatter. <laughs> That's a two hatter. Okay. Um, my friend, I'm actually going to switch up the hats on you like that. See that? Hi. I might do that a couple of times throughout the show. So I heard a little bit of tell us where you're originally from. I'm from Ireland. I'm from Dublin, Ireland. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of us uh, in the legendary marketer team. So I'm happy to be here. Yes, yes, my friend. Um, it's a beautiful thing. I'm so looking forward to hearing how you found us, got to us, how what's going on, why you're in Vietnam right now. Let's start. This is about you. We want to learn about you and what your experience has been like and how you're using these strategies to fund your um, your travel and your lifestyle. So tell us what led you to Legendary in the first place. What were you looking for? Were you adding to existing digital marketing skills? Were you starting brand new Tell us how you found us. Do you feel like you found what you're looking for and, and uh, ultimately, um, you know, what you were doing before you got here? I was, I, I was not um, adding to any digital, digital marketing skills I already had. I was literally starting brand new. Um, I've always wanted to travel. And um, the, I don't know if you know, but the cost of living in Dublin is so high. So if you only have one income, it's really hard to save a lot of money to go and travel for like an extensive period of time. So I was always looking for ways that, you know, I could get a little bit more income in. And it was, to be honest, it's really hard to find, especially um, anything le legit. So um, I was just stumbling on Instagram one day and I saw a girl that, um, that was doing really well. And she, she was living in the UK, which is really close to where I'm from. So I could kind of relate to her. And um, I just looked into it. I looked into it a lot. And I found you guys. And I've never looked back since. It's been one of the best decisions that I've made. Wow. So let me get. So how long have you been doing this? First of all, when did you so come into our world? I started end of February. I started at the end of February. Like, it was, it's, it's, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I went smooth into it. Like, I, we were kind of like looking for ways to make money online. And it just, I didn't really know much about affiliate marketing at all. And I, I actually almost um, went into a MLM, mm. which I'm so happy that I didn't. Mm. But um, 
before I stumbled upon this, I, that was where I was looking at. And I didn't really know much. And then I found legendary marketing. And I was like, okay, this is what I want. Like that other thing is just not it. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, just a way to, to monetize the content that I'm, that, that I make on the internet. And yeah, that's, that's basically how I got started with it. Now, is this you and your girlfriend who were both together at that time and were looking for ways to, to kind of escape the rat race and to get out of Dublin? I mean, talk to us a little bit about what your pain and struggle was a little bit more and, and why you were open to this or, or why you were looking for opportunities. And of course, you almost did the MLM. Take us back to a little bit more of what life was like before you started looking and of course, what drove you to be open to the entrepreneur lifestyle? Like I, I had a decent life to be honest. Like, you know, I worked 40 hours a week. I was a music research uh, analyst in Dublin. I worked from home, uh, which when I, when I got the job working from home, I thought that would be it, you know, happy days. I'm at home. I can do what I want. I can work, but it's still, it's still kind of just a bit, you know, you're, you're just at home. You can't leave the house. You you can't take more than two weeks um, annual leave. So that that was the pain. You know, that was my pain point. My pain point was the fact that I wanted to travel for a long time. And working a regular 9-to-5 job just won't, wouldn't allow me to do that unless I got a regular 9-to-5 job that would allow me to be completely remote, which is really hard, to be honest. Like, it's really hard. Um, so that's that's what it was, and we always wanted to travel. We didn't know it would be possible, really, for a long time. We didn't really like, you know, it's always been like a pipeline dream. And mm. then when we came across this, it was like, look, this it's working for people that are like us. So, like a lot of people, I I, I haven't seen a lot of people traveling and doing um, digital marketing um, the way I am. You know, I see a lot of people who have families and they're tied down with houses and they're doing really well, but they're not traveling. So I was like, that's what I want to do. That's where I want to be. And yeah, that's basically my pain point was wanting to travel and just get out of working from home. Wow. Wow. And so you and your girlfriend then started this in February. I was looking at your TikTok and your, in your Instagram here. Um, your first post on Instagram was March 26th. Your first post yeah, on, late on, on Instagram. <laughs> well, it's fine. Your first post uh, was, was, was February 9th on TikTok. Um, so basically you two got started, got busy, or at least you did. And, and I, I don't know what role your girlfriend plays if she's, um, you know, just supportive. Huge role. What? Huge role yeah. She, she, she plays a huge role. Like she does everything on a, back end she also has her own page and she knows she puts out videos as well which helps me a lot and um, so yeah it's been like the two the two of us like you know it, it's um it really helps like that's probably one of the biggest parts of how, why i'm doing well is because you need someone there to you know pick you up when you're not feeling feeling like you want to make videos you're not feeling like you want to send out emails you like someone needs to be there to tell you look this we have a plan you know, we have a plan and we need to stick to this plan. So that's that's the role that she, she's had for sure. Like, Nice, nice. So you, you kind of went all in. I can see that you took our challenge. You invested in our blueprints. What, yeah. what, what, what light bulb went off for you as you were going through our challenge, for example, and that made you say, I want to go all in on this? Because there's a lot of people right now who are obviously going through our challenge, just coming into our community, and also have either done zero – or have dabbled with some MLM and some various things that maybe didn't go the way they wanted to. What did you see that was different from other things you were looking at or tried? And what light bulbs went off to tell you, even as you were just going through the challenge, that I need to go all in on this? Well, the challenge was amazing. Like, like it's, I, I, I know it's exactly how you wanted it to be. Like, you wanted to give the most value for the latest, you know? So when I got in I was like okay this is exactly where I need to be and the 15 day challenge just basically like I know for some people maybe they did do the 15 day challenge and they were like oh this 
this is, you know, this is really good. I can, you know, do this for a bit and learn here. But it just made me really want to learn more. You know, it just made me want to deep dive in, learn more, get all the information that I could. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a 15 day challenge basically. And the wake up and then their lives as well. See, when you're doing a 15 day challenge and then you come onto these lives and you watch people that are like you, you know, and they're doing well and you watch ordinary people that, you know, you you probably have more tech skills than or you have been on TikTok longer than and they're doing well. It, it, it really gives you like motivation to be like, well, if they can do it, then so can I. Yeah. And that's that's what it was. It was these shows that I watched every morning and work, hating my life and work, being like, that's where I want to be. And I just knew what I had to do um, and did it. Basically, you know, it's 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 that simple, really. Like, as well, it's not really that simple. Like, I I can say it's that simple, but it isn't. You know, everyone goes at their own pace, but um, this was my pace, and I I thought, look, I did the fifteen day challenge, and it's just given me a taste for what's to come. So yeah, I dove right in, and I gave my all to it. You enrolled in the blueprints. You you also went through that curriculum. I would assume in in at least the affiliate marketing business blueprint to get started. And yeah. um, you know, I think so many people kind of maybe even come into the challenge and or even buy the blueprints, but don't really utilize it. How how have you humbled yourself to become a student and a learner through this process? which can oftentimes be difficult for us men, you know, I mean, we, 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 it's hard for us to humble ourselves. It's hard for us to be uh, learners um, and, and really be new at something again. How have you embraced being new and sucking at first and not knowing anything and essentially going back to school in order to, of course, get to this place to where now you're living more of your dream life but how did you embrace that learning, that student, that humility, and that being new as you were at, at the beginning, knowing nothing, putting out money to learn, right, in, 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 in essentially in the whole, both with time and money? How did you embrace that and not get overwhelmed with impending doom in thoughts of like worst case scenarios? How did you stay positive? How did you put one foot in front of the other? And how did you essentially embrace being new? Got a little bit of a gap here in our videos, everybody. So just stand by in the case you can also hear Tommy because he's frozen for me. He's in Vietnam, remember, my friends. So Wi-Fi or Internet may not be as 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 good as it is wherever you're tuning in from and wherever I am here in Florida and the United States of America. Um, OK, you're back, brother. You're back. Did you hear my question? OK, you're kind of floating in and out of of being back now you're froze again bear with us everybody bear with us everybody okay this is something that you want to hear in a story that probably we all need to hear okay i see you you're back did you hear my question am I, brother am i back and um, yeah. i didn't hear the full question i'm really sorry about that this is this is the problem with you know traveling yeah um, you have you of don't course. you don't have uh, the best um internet so yeah I, I, I asked, how did you embrace being new as you were going through the blueprints, spending money, investing in yourself? Yeah. It was probably yeah. scary. How did you embrace being humble and new so you so you could actually go through this curriculum and learn these skills and then eventually put the rubber to the road and start applying them? What was it like for you and how did you embrace being new instead of getting overwhelmed and falling into negative thinking? Um, well, I, I, like I always go back to these live shows like you know just hearing other people's stories and um, it's it, it's not one person here that I that I watched said that it worked for them like this not one person everyone everyone had their own story and it was never straight away so I always knew that I would have to work and um, I also had that vision of traveling so that vision of traveling was hanging over my head the whole time 
So whenever I, and there was days that I felt like, you know, oh, I don't want to, you know, um, learn this today. I don't want to put this video out today. I don't want to watch this. And it was just always hanging over my head that, well, if you don't want to do that, then you don't want to travel. And um, that's exactly what really humbled me. Um, also, you know, just just knowing that I like it's if if you're trying to do this for just the sole purpose of making um, of, of making loads of money, it's it's probably not the best way to be looking at it because when you don't make it at the start, when you don't make money at the start, you're going to be disappointed and probably stop. So. Um, I always knew that I probably won't make anything for the first six months. So if I just be consistent and put out videos and I'm doing the right things, then um, it's going to work. And that's exactly what happened. So mm. I hope I answered your question, but yeah, to, stay yeah, humble, really to stay humble, to stay humble, I just watched the, the lives and watched the, everyone that was on it and just saw where they were coming from and their backgrounds and everyone was different and they had their own stories and, that it just it really kept me humble and the blueprints and the 15 day challenge was just so well built that I, I was there was always the next thing that I was waiting to conquer you know yeah. Yeah, yes I did this well but now I know there's something next you know so that's that's basically it I love that I love that um, Melanie says TJ everything you have said so far totally resonates with my boyfriend and I we have the same goals to create while traveling and have been supporting each other every step of the way. It's so great to hear you and your girlfriend have been doing it together. Thank you for sharing and inspiring us. You mentioned, that. you mentioned having that vision of traveling. How, you know, we heard this yesterday from um, somebody, I, I, I believe it was yesterday, but it's, it's, I hear it said all the time about a vision board about, mm -hmm. I think Chelsea Weemit that has a vision board right on her phone that every time she opens up her phone, she has little pictures of the things that she wants, the lifestyle that she wants, the things that she wants. How important do you think it is to actually not just say, but create the visual images maybe on your desktop computer, maybe a vision board hanging on the side of your uh, office up on the wall where you can look at it every day, maybe on your phone like Chelsea said she did or our guest yesterday. You know, that word having the vision of traveling is, is resonating with me. It resonated with Melanie. I'm sure it's resonating with other people as well. And by the way, we don't all have to have the same vision, right? You may have had a vision to travel. Others may have a vision of, of sitting on the floor with their kids at noon and having lunch, of, of sitting at the table every night with their family and eating together instead of being at work and coming home late. Um, same thing with breakfast or maybe going on a vacation with their family, which they haven't been on in years. How important do you think it is to begin to start to, to have, not just create, but have those images around you to where you can constantly be reminded of why you are doing this? It's so important. It's one of the most important things because motivation is not enough, you know, like, like, you, you could be able to like motivate yourself however you want, but it's not enough. <laughs> you need, you really need that vision and it needs, and like, it needs to be realistic. Okay. It needs to be attainable and everything. And, and, and I know I say that, but everything is attainable, but you need to be able to see yourself there, you know, and the vision board that you just said, we had one of those. We had a vision board. Every time we woke up, it was right there. And one of the vision um, one of the things we had there was to be on Wake Up Legendary. So it's full circle mode right now. It's full circle mode. One of the visions was traveling Wake Up Legendary. I'm traveling and I'm on Wake Up Legendary. So yeah, you could like, it's an honor to be here. And I, I visioned it. I, I visioned myself being here. And a lot of people always talk about, um, you know, what's the when when you when you vision yourself. And you, what's the word I'm trying to say? It's like you, um, you make it happen. They always talk. Manifest. Um, manifesting, yes. A lot of people talk about manifesting. And I'm, I'm like, yes, they always say that. But it really works. It actually really works. It really works. So, yeah, you need to be able to manifest it. Hats on this whole, uh, this whole show. Just because this is a two hat. You need, to be, it. You need um, to be able to see it in front of you. And, yeah, it yeah, that's it's so important. It's one of the most important things. 
So how did you transition to then creating content and um, being comfortable on camera? I mean, obviously you, you weren't creating content before. I think you said you were either a music analyst or something. Yeah. That doesn't particularly sound like you were in front of the camera. That sounds like you were more behind, if anything, the camera. How did you eventually get comfortable on camera? What was that transition like for you? Um, what were the limiting beliefs that you had? How, did you look at yourself and say, oh, I, you know, I'm horrible. I, I don't like the way I look. Sad. I mean, what were some of the things that came up that could have potentially stood in your way of following through? Yeah, just um, I just didn't think I was going to be going on camera. I don't know if people know this, but I have a, a slight stammer and I just stammered while I said that. So <laughs> I didn't <laughs> notice. But I noticed that since you pointed it out. Yeah. So it was one of the things that I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I'll sound, sound on camera. I don't know this. I don't know that. And I had, I had so much like things. I was in my own head all the time. And I always come back to it. Wake up legendary. And I'm seeing people that like are a lot older than me. And, and are, they don't look like they would be good on camera, you know. And they're talking about how they weren't good on camera. And I'm just like, look, you just need to just start. And then when you start, you'll get better. And that's what happened. My first, if you check my first few, um, the first few videos that I made and my most recent one, there's a huge difference, but you just have to start somewhere. And that's, that you just, everyone starts somewhere. Everyone, even the best person behind camera was not the best when they started. And that's what I had in my head. That's what helped me get through it. And yeah, that's where I am now. So I definitely had, um, you know, thoughts in my head that I wasn't going to be good or, and I'm not even saying I'm good now, but I'm I'm just able to just, you know, go in front of the camera. You make like it's you and the camera. It's not like you have a hundred people looking right. at you. You make a mistake, get it out of there, do it again. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I think of myself as the same way. I mean, I don't even really think of myself as incredibly good on camera. I mean, I I, I really I really don't. I don't think there's ever a point where I have over the last 13 years been like, I've really arrived, you know, like I really, <laughs> really, really got this, you know, just lights, camera action. Hey, how's it going? It's Dave shot. You know, I mean, it's just not like that. You know, I seem like that though. Like it seems like that every time I, I watch you, it seems like you were born to do this. <laughs> Maybe she was born with it. You know, like it's a Maybelline commercial. No, I mean, I, I think that, the longer you do it, the biggest gift that this has given me is I think more being more comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. And I think what I've realized is that it's more being, being, being good on camera and being successful at online marketing is more about your confidence in how, how the, 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 the you know, the energy that you're projecting in terms of feeling comfortable in your own skin. I mean, it just, it shows. And if, if you're, if you're all up in your head, you're dead. And, you know, that's just the simplest way to put it. Because if you're more worried about how you look than the value that you're delivering, and if you're saying something that's actually useful to somebody, then you're dead. And I yeah. think that can be true in real life too, in terms of, you meet somebody and, and they just seem so kind of either nervous or like, like they're just too, I think the perfect word for it is self-absorbed. They're just absorbed in their self. You can just tell they're consumed with how they look or their own insecurities or their own thoughts about themselves. And they may even come off as judgmental, but that's always because somebody is feeling insecure themselves. Yeah, I, I've realized in my most judgmental times, it is because I was feeling the most insecure and I was trying to essentially take the attention off of me and how uncomfortable I was feeling. And so over the years, for me, it has become a, a practice and it is a practice a practice of being more comfortable in my own skin, a practice of being less absorbed than I was, self-absorbed than I was the day before, a practice of not 
over editing or over critiquing my videos. How about you? Have you noticed yourself watching your videos and critiquing your videos less? Have you watched and noticed you getting more comfortable in your own skin as well and being quicker to hit post rather than saying, let me watch this one more time? Because hell, I mean, if you've got a one minute to a, think about a 15 minute video. If I sit there and I, I create, let's be, let's say I got a five minute video. If I spend five minutes to create it, then I spend another five minutes to watch it. Then I watch it again. That's 15 friggin' minutes versus posting it and moving on. Or, you know, or I could have spent that time editing that video instead of, you know, going over in my head, whether it was good enough. Are, are you, are you resonating with what I'm saying? And are, are you seeing that the practice of, 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 of consistency paying off in, in, in the way of you getting more comfortable in your skin and actually in turn becoming more productive as a result. Yeah. So how I got over this was because a video that I didn't think was going to do well, did well. Okay. So when a video you don't think is going to do well, does well, then you start to stop really because like what you might think that isn't great could be great for somebody else. You know, and that's what, and that's what happened to me. I was watching my videos and watching them and I was like, this is not a great video, but I posted it anyway and it did well and people thought it was a good video, which made me stop watching it so much and just once it's made and I get the point across, I just post it. And that, that is just comes with experience and just posting more videos. Yet the first few times that I was, I was making videos, I was watching them for hours and some of them I wouldn't post and some of them I would and yeah, it, it, it was horrible. But the more videos you post and the more reception that you get from the internet, um, you, you, you start to get in your head less because it's like a lot of my content is not for me. You know, it's for other people. So yeah. I, I make the content and I post it. I post it for them and they tell me what they think. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's how I've um, learned to get over that one. So what have you what have you learned about creating content? What do you attribute your, your success to? I mean, you've got eleven plus thousand followers on Instagram. You've got um, a hundred and let's see, a hundred and thirty thousand followers on TikTok. I mean, you really started marketing in March, and on one of one of them, the beginning of March, the other, the end of March, what do you attribute the success to? What have you learned about what works, what doesn't? Can you give us any specific examples? Yeah. So um, consistency, I know, I know it's always said and it's over said, but consistency on social media is the number one key because it's not really, it is about what you post, but the way social media works this, these days is that they'll, they'll just, if you're posting like a lot and they see that, okay, this person is here to stay, they will push your content out. They, they'll just start pushing it out to more people. So the people who don't really do well post maybe for the first month and they post consistently for the first month and they don't get anywhere. And then, and then they're like, I'm not good at, but that's not what it is. It's you, you just have to keep going and you have to keep posting. And it's not just about consistency as well. Your videos have to be eye catching. I, but if you want to do it like I'm doing, there's other ways and there's, and like other people are doing it completely different and they are killing it. But if I can only speak um, about what I'm, I'm doing, I, I have a decent hook. I write my, I write a lot of my own hooks and I've got that skill from legendary marketer, you know, um, I, I try, I don't try and edit it too much, but I do put a bit of, edits and um yeah it 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 just works for me that way i have a certain i usually put um a certain sound on my videos um so if, if there's like if there's a sound that is doing well like you know a, a, a music like the song that is is doing well at the moment you should use that on a lot of your videos so that's yeah. what I, i've been doing i've just been consistent using trending sounds um using uh, decent hooks and um making sure that i have a call to action in all of my um clips so are you posting are you posting it looks like you're working in the make money online niche 
first of all, how did you decide to pick that niche? I mean, we have so many people who come in who have different expertise, different professions, different knowledge. They, you know, in, in on decade and a day, for example, in the business blueprints, every single workshop, we do an example of a different product in a different niche. And we try to give as many different examples. But of course, coming in, people are new as like yourself and you know, deciding what sort of topic you want to, in niche you want to work in, what audience do you want to target, can feel like a big decision. How did you come to that choice, and what were the the what were some of the considerations that you gave in terms of deciding who your audience was, who you were going to talk to, and what niche you wanted to target? So it just comes right back down to traveling. So I knew that. I wanted to travel and the best way that I could market that is, you know, people to be able to earn income while traveling. So that, that was like the first step. It's also something that I'm interested in so I can talk about it forever. And um, so with those two, it was just almost like a no brainer really. Um, and like, I, I didn't know how big it was going to be. I didn't know how well I was going to do. But um, as you keep going, things come to you. Like, at first, I was just kind of talking about, you know, making money online. This is how you can make money online here. These companies help you make money online here. And I was just talking about those companies. And then other companies started to come to me. And it's like, oh, I see you're talking about this. And you're doing really well doing this. Do you want to talk about our company? And, and that's just how it just went from, you know, it just went from me talking about, companies for free to companies wanting to pay me to talk about their company and mm. it, it yeah it's that's just that's just basically what, what what it was so it started off with traveling and i knew that if um i'm going to be traveling i'm going to have to make um find a way to make money online so that's exactly what i'm going to talk about yeah that's that's great that's that's really cool and sometimes different opportunities present themselves once you actually get going and that's one exactly. thing that i think a lot of people think that they have to um, have everything figured out. It's nice to have a, a lead capture page or a funnel that's set up before you start marketing. We show you how to do that in multiple places. Um, we begin to show you how to do that in the challenge. We show you how to do that in depth in the blueprints. Um, you know, it's nice to be capturing leads, but ultimately it's also important to be growing your social media accounts and not particularly focused on, as you said at the beginning, having this mindset to, to making a tons of sales in your first month or two. Um, building your audience is the most important thing and giving people's call, giving your audience calls to action to just simply follow you, which was one yeah. of the big takeaways from the, the mastermind just a, a week ago was that um, you don't always have to be telling people to click your link in your bio. You don't always have to be asking people, and, and especially you don't have to be talking about products that are for sale from your social media profiles. That's really not a good strategy because if you're pitching and hawking and selling something from your social media profile opposed to giving things away for free, that's not what people are on social media for. They don't buy until you have caught their attention and delivered much enough value to them that they say, I, I really want what this person's talking about. And oftentimes they will follow you first and even opt into your email list for your free gift first before they decide to buy, which often comes either days, weeks, and even sometimes months later and you fill your pipeline. And before you know it, you have an unstoppable flow or pipeline of people who are buying because you've built up enough goodwill. So you talked about having a good hook. I think you're creating a lot of side hustle, hustle videos. Talk to us about that meat and potatoes of the content. What's working best for you? Are you talking about your personal life, what you're eating, showing little pictures of you throughout your day in your house, or are you more sitting in front of the camera and trying to give people ideas and education about making money online, traveling the world? And then what has your call to, your most popular or effective call to action been? So yeah, I'm doing a bit of both. Um, at the start, I was doing a lot of, you know, me walking around my house and talking to, um, talking into the camera about, you know, what I do and how they can do it as, as how the people can do it as, as well. 
And then the more I got more comfortable in front of, of the camera, the more I started to um, actually show them um, via websites that, okay, this is what you do to, to set up a sales funnel. This, this um, website can help you make this. This, this website can help you do, to do, do this. And I feel like that's um, what's really working for me. Um, and I just kind of like kind of stuck to what uh, works, which 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 was you know the the companies that help people make money and the companies that they can sign up to to be able to get jobs and the companies that they can sign up to to be able to get freelance work because because a lot of a lot of my a lot of people that are on my social media want to know where they can get free freelance work and I, and, I, and, I, and I talk about that first that's the hook you know that's the hook is like if you want to be able to make an extra bit this is what you can do and also I'm also doing affiliate marketing you know yeah. and a lot and a lot of people don't know how many people do affiliate marketing they're seeing their favorite celebrities their favorite instagrammers and some people just need to be told that this is what they're actually doing you know like yeah. it's, it's the same way that when I started with um, legendary marketer I didn't know a lot as well until yeah. I was watching your videos and you were telling me that this is what they're doing, by the way. This is how they're doing it. And I'm like, whoa, okay, this is how they're doing it. And I'm just relaying that information back onto to, uh, people. And that's what's, that's what's working. Yeah, I think you made a great, I think you make a great point there that the hook is actually not, if you say, for example, if you are talking about affiliate marketing, which which is a great example, lots of our new people in our community are talking about affiliate marketing. And that's the thing that they're excited about. That's the thing that they're doing. And then you automatically just go and just talk about that and that only. But a lot of people don't know what the hell that is. And so you're talking about this thing that they don't they're not educated in and in a non educated person will never buy. So what they are familiar with is, you know, and what they're looking for is just any way to make money online. So it's good to talk about a variety of different options because now exactly. you don't seem like you're selling just one thing, exactly. and especially probably not doing a very good job of explaining it because you're fairly new yourself. Instead, go out there and research other ways to make money online. Simple, easy ways, S signing up for surveys um, uh, and doing surveys to get paid. Um, uh, online jobs that will pay you to work from home. Um, once you deliver that value, you know, even going on Fiverr, a lot of people don't realize the site Fiverr is a place where you can go on and offer your services for five, 10, 15, 20 bucks of doing voiceovers or doing um, data entry or editing documents or making little graphics on Canva for people or logo designing or whatever. And when you show people these things that are more understandable to them, that that's the hook. It's not particularly that they're going to go and do those things because why? Most people don't take action on what they watch. But what they do is they save the video and they say, oh, that's valuable. I'm going to save that in case I don't find anything better. Right. Or I'm going to follow this person because at the end of your video, you say follow for more ways. For more to yeah. learn how to get your baby to go to sleep at night, more ways to learn how to get your dog to sit and pay attention for more ways. I, there's this guy who's this lawyer, which you've probably seen his videos. And he says, follow for more tips on how to master communication. And uh, you know, that's his call to action. Every day he's given a little tip about how not to get emotionally uh, charged up in an argument, how to set boundaries with people, how to win an argument, how to, uh, you know, how to um, whatever, how to, how to, uh, you know, tell somebody no with, without being mean. And he, and his call to action at the end is follow if you want more tips on how to be effective communicator. And so that's the thing, or they save the video because they say that this is really valuable. I want to come back to this. And as you said, you, you, you know, you weave in whatever your free gift is. And many of you are just being too, you know, you're talking about things that people don't understand, even in your free gift. For example, free guide to affiliate marketing. Well, they still don't know what affiliate marketing is. Instead, what about my top five in favorite ways to make money online in 2023? 
Now, that's something that's more generic that they can understand. And then when they down, when they opt into your bridge page funnel on the or, or your landing page on the bridge page in that video, you say your free PDF is on the way in the email while you wait for it. I'm going to explain my number one favorite way to get my baby to go to sleep, to get my dog to behave himself, to make money online. And then you explain whatever it is that you're selling or promoting. And we talk about that in the challenge, friends, and we talk about that in the blueprints. I mean, we, we hammer it home. We beat it to death. We, 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 we kick the dead horse, all those things. OK, so this is not new concepts. It's just that so many of us just basically come into this community and see other people out there and just start copying. And a lot of times it's the blind leading the blind. And just like Phil Koberger said at our mastermind just recently, the smartest thing that he did was as he was struggling at the beginning, his wife actually said to him, God bless her, Heather. He said, she said, well, Phil, did you actually read the instructions of the thing that you bought? And that means, did you go through the damn training that you bought? And so we, we, we want to help you all to understand exactly what Tommy is talking about here, which is how to reach people in a way that they can understand because they don't have your knowledge. You've gone through a 15 day challenge and you've gone through maybe the blueprints, but you, you, but you have to remember that these people have zero, say somebody's struggling with getting their baby to go to sleep at night. They are doing nothing but struggling with that total absolute misery and probably sleep deprivation of not being able to get their baby to sleep at night. They don't have a blueprint. They don't have a beginning. They are hopeless. They are frustrated. You have to speak to them, not in jargon. For example, if, you, if there was a, 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 some sort of a strategy called the rock of the, 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 the DS rock method or something that would, if you said that they wouldn't know what the hell you're talking about. So you have to speak in very simple terms. Like, let me show you five ways to get your baby to go to sleep at night. And number five is my favorite opt in to get my free PDF or, or again, in your content, more easily understandable things that they can, that they can relate to versus the, as you said, T Tommy, the majority of people have never heard the word affiliate marketing. They have no idea what the hell it is. They have, no, and, and that's we've heard this over and over. And I usually put on my marketing shades when I'm explaining this. As you're really going through this training, you're almost putting on a pair of glasses that are allowing you to see the internet and how money is made. But your your audience doesn't have those glasses yet, so it's up to you to make it really simple and really understandable. And often the way that you do that is by giving them lots of different examples that they can relate to and saying, I hope that's valuable. If you're interested in learning more, getting a tip every day, following me. And if you want my number one strategy, download my PDF above. What res what comes up for you as I'm adding and only piggybacking to the wonderful points that you already made, brother? Well, first of all, I am going to use all of that all of what you just said there like like you, you learn something new every day even though you you've beaten the dead horse i've just picked that up right now and i'm going to use that you know on my funnel but yeah it's, it's exactly what you just just said um if you just come straight out and say like yo let me teach you about affiliate marketing they're going to be like what is that swipe done you know you, you you need to speak to them in their language as you said you need to speak to them in their language and then they'll start to understand your language a little bit more. And, and, that's, and that's what basically what I do with um, a lot of my videos when I say, okay, this is how you can, um, this, is, this site can help you get an online job where you can work from home. This site can help you do surveys. This site can help you play games and make, and <laughs> make money from home. And then after that, I'm like, by the way, if that's not for you, I do affiliate marketing. If you want to learn more about that, here you go. You know, you, you can't you can't just be talking about the same thing over and over and over because it's just going to get old. You need to find different ways to get people to understand what you're saying, find different ways to get people to be interested in, interested in, in, in what you're saying. And most of the time, I'm I'm not really trying to get people to buy anything off me. I'm just trying to help them. You know, I'm yeah. just giving them information. And then whatever you do with that information is up to you. Right. 
let me give everybody a quick little masterclass on just how I could go and find. Can you see this, Tommy? Can you see chat GPT? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, how, what, what are, see, this is something that, first of all, chat GPT is a artificial intent. Now I want to explain this just like I would be talking to, even though we're a marketing community, I want to explain this because there are some of you who may not even know what chat GPT is. Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence sort of search engine, kind of like Google on steroids, okay, where it will actually not just pull up websites, it will pull up and give you answers and talk back to you when you ask it a question. And it's a free platform you can upgrade for, I think, $20 a month. We teach a lot about how to use this tool to get it to write a lot of things for you, including emails, ads, videos, video scripts, ebooks, ebook titles, full ebooks, the whole nine yards. But if I needed, a lot of people say, I'm, I don't have a lot of creativity in terms of video topics. And just a great example of what we're talking about right now, if you need content and you are struggling even right now to think about, well, what would I talk about that I could give value in terms of helping people to find some simple ways that they would be familiar with to make money online. I could say, what are the most common, simple, and easy to understand ways to make money online in 2023 as a new beginner? Okay. All right. Now watch, it's literally going to type this out for me. <laughs> look at this. As you are watching this, my friends, look at this. I didn't even tell it how many to give me, but it gave me 12. Okay. The first, and it even gave me a, it even gave me, um, you know, a, a couple of little, um, you know, bullet points here of a description. Freelancing, offer your skills and services on freelance platforms like Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr. And I saw one of you say, what was that site that, Dave, that you mentioned that you can upload things and get paid $5, 10 15 $20 in order to exchange work for money? Fiverr, okay? Not only fans. Ba-boom, boom. Hey, hello. Double hat throw. <laughs> Although that's pretty hot too, isn't it, Tommy? Um, I, I wouldn't know too much about that, but um, yeah. <laughs> Content creation, online surveys and market research, right? Okay, let's 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 take online market. Uh, I could just say online services and market research. Participate in online services and market research studies on platforms like Swagbuck, Survey Junkie, or Vindale Research. You won't make a lot, but it's simple and requires minimal effort. Elaborate on number three. Give me examples from the sites and methods you mentioned as well as 10 more examples just like it. See, the power of your answer is going to determine upon the power of your question. In other words, ask great questions, get great answers. Ask crappy questions, get crappy answers. So, Online surveys and market researches. Examples, Swagbucks. Swagbucks is a popular platform that rewards users for completing various online tasks, including surveys, watching videos, and shopping online. Users earn points, Swagbucks, that can be converted into gift cards or PayPal cash. And then it also did that for Survey Junkie, Vindale Research. But look, it gave me 10 more. Microtasking, user testing, paid blogging and writing. Hold on a second. I'm going to correct it, even though it gave me 12 instead of 10. I want 10 more examples of survey. And what did they call it? Survey and market research examples of ways to make money online in 2023. See how I can go back and correct it. It's sort of like an employee that I can say, well, you know what? You didn't quite do what I asked you to do. Certainly. And you never, this never talks back to you either. It never gives you any flack, right? 
never gives you any 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 sass. Certainly, here are 10 more examples of ways to make money online through survey market research opportunities in 2023. Pinecone research, one opinion, my points. My points allows users to earn points by taking surveys, shopping online, and watching videos. Points can be redeemed for gift cards or PayPal cash. Okay. Write, write me a 60 second. I'm, am I, hold on a second. I got to come back over here to see my comments. Am I blowing anybody's mind real quick? Tommy, how you doing over there, brother? Give me some commentary. No, I've, I've, I use ChatGPT all the time. I use it all the time. It's, it's one of my best friends. Um, yeah, it just knows so much. And since it's been out, it's really helped me make um, a lot of my hooks, actually. So when I say I make all my hooks myself, I mean me and ChatGPT make, <laughs> make, make my hooks. <laughs> little buddy there. Okay, watch yeah. this. Watch this. Watch this. Okay, write me a 60-second script for number three. In the most recent list you made, I'm go. This script is going to be used for a video on TikTok. So also include a cliffhanger hook at the beginning and a call to action to follow my account for more useful for more useful tips like this one okay all right let's do a little spell correct even though we don't even need to do that but i'm just a ninth grade dropout here who just does the best that i can and has lots of spelling errors so boom ready all right, here we go. Certainly, here is a 60-second script. Here we go, baby. Here we go, baby. Come on now. Come on now. All right, here I go. Here I go. All right, certainly, here's a 60-second script for TikTok video promoting my points, a platform for making money through surveys and more, beginning with an intriguing hook to grab viewers' attention. Hey there, TikTok fam. Ever wondered how to make money online? Well, I've got an awesome tip for you today that could put some extra cash in your pocket. Introducing My Points. It's a fantastic platform where you can earn rewards for taking surveys, shopping online, and even watching videos. Yes, you heard that right. Get paid to watch videos. Not only can you rack up points quickly, but you can also redeem them for gift cards to your favorite stores or cash or PayPal. It's super easy to use. I've personally found it to be fun and convenient way to earn some extra dough online. But wait, here's the best part. In my next video, I'm going to reveal a special trick that will help you maximize your earnings on my points. You won't want to miss it. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in my bio to sign up for my points and be sure to follow my account for more useful tips on that special trick in the next video. Stay tuned and let's make money together. Now you can edit that, right? TJ, you don't have to use that video as What's is. The word, yeah. Okay, but it gave you a beginning, you know, a, a beginning sort of foundation. Okay, now make the follow up script <laughs> for the next video. Boom. Uh, 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 uh. I like to dance while I'm making money. I don't know about you, Tommy, but I like to dance when I'm making money. Okay, here we go. Hey, TikTok fam, remember when I told you about my points and teased the special trick to boost your earnings? Well, <laughs> the wait is over because I've got that gold nugget for you today. Boom, boom. As a matter of fact, it's platinum. It ain't gold. Just a quick recap. My point is an my points is an awesome platform where you earn points for taking surveys, shopping, and watching videos. But here's the game changer. The secret sauce is to be consistent and set a daily goal for yourself. Shh. The more surveys you complete, the more you shop through my points, the faster those points stack up. Plus, here's a tip within a tip. God, Tommy, I'm f this is good. It's really good. It's actually amazing. Like, it's okay. it's, it's a better script than than the, the average human human would make off the cuff and you can literally get that in seconds in seconds, seconds. all right 
So, okay, here's a tip within a tip. Um, uh, keep an eye out for special offers and promotions. My point often dishes out extra rewards and bonuses. Cha-ching! Boom! Money! Boom, 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 boom! So here's your action plan. Set your daily goal, be consistent, and watch your earnings soar. If you haven't already, click the link in my bio to, um, you know, to learn more. Join my points. Let's make money together. But that's not all. I've got more money-making tips and exciting content coming your way. Don't miss out. Follow my account and stay tuned for the next video. See ya. Peace. Man, and, and it even gives you a little tip. Remember to keep the energy high. Use visuals, music that match the excitement of your tips. This will help you engage your audience and encourage them to follow your account for more valuable content. And again, you don't. You can tweak this. You don't have to put a my points link in your bio. You could just simply say, "Follow me for more money making tips like this." Tommy, I feel like I feel like we're giving away the platinum right now. Now here, brother, chime in. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What's coming up for you? And I want to see if these people are actually fired up and actually getting value from this. Give me some feedback in the comments while Tommy's chiming in here to this Chat GPT money making strategy that we're laying out for you. Yeah, I, and the best part about it is that it is completely free. Like you, it's like you don't have to pay for ChatGPT. So like you, you really need to be getting on this because a lot of people are already using it to build um, channels worth you know hundreds of thousands of followers. There's so many things that you can actually do with ChatGPT. Like you can ask it to make you pictures. And it will it will make you like a picture and you can write stuff on the picture and then post. And then you're literally then building an account off the back of just ChatGPT. So, yes, you, you can use it to make hooks for when, you know, you can make the videos for them hooks. But you could also use it to literally make you a post and you don't have to do anything facelift. Yeah. And people are making accounts and are making thousands of doing this alone. And a lot of people don't know how to do it, but a lot of people do. So yeah. like, the thing about ChatGPT is that a lot of people are afraid to, you know, dive into all this new technology, but um, it can really help. And it's helped me throughout my whole journey. And obviously, you know a lot about ChatGPT as well. You know what, dude? I know a lot about marketing. I don't know a lot about ChatGPT. I just... I've, I've learned that it's a, the trick to chat GPT is asking better questions. And as a marketer and a copywriter, you know, my whole career in marketing has been about be, learning how to be clear, learning how to, you know, learning how to write copy, learning how to create content and what chat GPT, chat GPT just did for us all there in, in right in front of our eyes was what I have been doing with my own fingertips for the last 13 years. So part of the advantage that I have and what you all need to also understand that it's also still good to go through the curriculum to, to learn the concepts of marketing. You, you could watch this, this, this episode absolutely and take a lot of gold and that's what we're hoping that you do. But I also know how to manage this employee and chat GPT is like an employee because I've also done the job right in and, and, and copywriting and, you know, all the sales videos, all the webinars, all the content that you see currently on the legendary marketer platform was all created before chat GPT came along. All of those videos scripted out, all of those presentations created and scripted out all the sales videos, all the content. Obviously, this show is not scripted in any way. So there's value in both using the tool, but also in learning the concepts of marketing so you can use the tool better, right? If you just put me on a construction site with a hammer, a hammer and say, go make money, go build, go build a house. I'd be like, you know, shit, what do I do with this thing? Versus if I have a blueprint and I have people on the job who are working with me to show me how to use the hammer, I can be more effective. Surely if I got the hammer, I'm eventually hopefully going to figure it out, but it might take me longer and there might make more pain. And so, you know, I might have more pain doing it. So, I mean, 
the re I am not a chat GPT expert. I'm a marketing expert, which makes me even more valuable and able to use whatever tools come out. And my friends, there are going to be some tools that come out over the course of the next five years that are going to make you poopy in your pants. They are going to blow your mind. They are going to have you literally throwing your neighbor's hat because they are so crazy and so powerful. And the truth is, is that, you know, sure, we can, you know, stay on the sidelines and then think that when those tools come out, we're just going to automatically know how to use them. But having that knowledge of how to be an effective direct response marketer, how to write copy, how to, um, you know, how to create and craft a message that gets people to pay attention and creates desire in them to want to learn more that touches on their pain points will help you to take those chat GPT scripts and enhance them even more than just being mindless copy and paste, which we all know is not an effective way to do anything. Many of you have probably tried that already, gone right out there onto Instagram and TikTok and just started copying people. And you know that that's not, and you get frustrated because you copy the exact same thing, or at least you think you do, and it doesn't work as well for you. And you say, I'm frustrated. This doesn't work. It's a scam. And it's not. It's just that you didn't really learn how to effectively understand what they're doing and then make it your own. And it's much more powerful to model instead of copy. That's one of the most it's one of the most it's one of the the highest pain skill sets you can learn is to how to model when i went to a tony robbins event i picked up on a lot of different ways in which he navigated the room ways in which he communicated ways in which he used his body language and his body and physiology to communicate and i took that and modeled those strategies back in real life in live events not copied Right. I mean, he has this thing where he goes, whoa, boom. I didn't copy that. I didn't go. Oh, whoa. so everybody in the room goes, that's what Tony Robbins does. You see what I'm saying? I, yep. but I, I learned and modeled from various different ways that he moved around the room and things that he did to get people to pay attention. What he uses that when he's getting ready to kick off a session, he goes, make your move. Whoa, boom. And that's how he gets everybody to pay attention. A lot of times I'll come up in the room and go, um, you know, on the count of three, say legendary. One, two, three. And everybody goes legendary. And it's a way to kind of get people talking, moving, and get them to come back, pay attention. And so it's modeling a behavior versus copying. And I think that's the main difference that we're trying to get everybody to understand in Tommy. You've done a good job of that because you were patient enough and dedicated enough to go through and begin to learn these these strategies and skill sets. And now you're able to use the tools effectively. And when I pulled up ChatGPT, you were like, yeah, I've been using that. And yeah. that's ultimately the, the goal that we have here. So what have you learned about yourself on this journey, brother, that you either didn't know or you've been <clears throat> reminded that you're capable of through this process? Um, well, I learned that I'm resilient, to be honest. Like, I didn't think I had resilience in me. I I thought that I would be one of them people that, I just thought that I would stay in my own head and I would just, you know, it wouldn't work and I would just leave it there and not come back to it. But I have been resilient and um, I've learned that I am coachable. You know, like, I am able to be coached. I am able, like... I'm not going to know everything, but if you're able to listen and take in, in, in information and then use what you've just learned and keep using that, you are, you're a coachable person. And that's probably one of the best skills that you could have because not, not like nobody knows everything. And you can like, even today, I thought I was going to come onto the show and I was going to, you know, talk about what I've done and so forth. I've literally learned so much from this show, from being here right now that I'm going to take and use. Mm -hmm. So like you, you don't know when you're going to be coached or when you're going to take in information that you could help, that I could use to really help. And one of the things that I learned about myself is that I am a very coachable person. And that's probably what um, helped me do so well 
so far. Yeah, you're humble, you're coachable, and that's the exact skill set that you need in order to become successful at anything, right? Because you're never and you never want to be the smartest guy in the room. And I think that's a big mindset shift for a lot of people because they want to be the man. They want to be the woman. They want to be the person who's calling the shots. And the truth is, is that the more successful you get in the, in the more rooms you get in that have really intelligent, successful people, nobody wants to be the smartest guy in the room. Because if you're the smartest guy in the room, then you're not getting any value. You're not, you're the one who has to, and especially when you're in a learning environment, and you're not doing business or selling, you don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. You want to be there learning. And for those of you who are going through this process, who don't have, you know, going through our challenge and in the challenge, we're sort of conditioning you all to learn. We're trying to help you to be humble. We're trying to help you to surrender a little bit of your own will so you can take on our experience in this particular area, which we're not trying to say we're going to coach you on your marriage. We're not going to coach you on how to be parents. We're not going to coach you on all the other million. We're not going to take you and show you how to be expert fishermen or expert chefs or expert mechanics or expert engineers. We're just saying we know this one thing. We know this one thing really well. It's called marketing. We are legendary marketer. And we'd like to share that skill set with you because we think that it'll change your life. And it's unbelievable how many people who will come into this and not even sign up to have a call with a business plan advisor going through the challenge or who won't even finish the challenge. Because why? You, you just couldn't get humble enough to learn. You just had to be the man. Your ego got in the way of your bank account. Let me say it again. <laughs> Your ego got in the way of your bank account. And I've had that happen before and it hurts, right? When you walk away from the situation and you were all geared up for a result, but you just couldn't get humble. And your ego got in the way of your bank account. And I'll tell you what, when you set your ego aside and you get humble and like you just said, which reminds me, and I'm like that this weekend, dude, I got 10 guys here at my house all I'm the youngest guy in the room. I'm the most, I'm the poorest guy in the room. I'm the poorest guy in the room and I'm pretty damn well off. I was even before we started legendary marketer. Cause I've been doing this for 13 years and legendary marketers only seven years old. So I'm here. I'm humble. I'm learning. I'm hosting. I'm, and we always a different man host. Every time we do this three times a year, I'm the poorest guy in the room youngest guy in the room. And I'm going to be listening and learning. I'm not going to be teaching. I'm not going to be sitting there doing the majority of the talking. I'm going to be open for feedback. I'm going to be laying my life issues and challenges on the floor to men that I trust, to people that I trust. And I'm going to be receiving feedback, just like you said, Tommy. And it's such a powerful skill. It's such a beautiful space to live your life in as well, because there's no more pressure to always be the man. No more pressure to always be the woman. You don't always have to be in charge. And I think some of you, if you really actually embrace that, you'd get a lot of you'd get a lot of peace in your life because you're probably like always in charge or you think you need to always be in charge. And the truth is, is sometimes we need to relinquish the reins, because as I was told when I got clean and I'm not saying all of you are getting clean and trying to get off the streets and all that. But when I was getting clean 14 years ago. Somebody told me, Dave, your best thinking got you here. And I think that that applies to a lot of things in life. Our best thinking, our very best thinking, the absolute best ideas that we could come up with actually got us in the situation that we're in. And so it is okay to put down the shovel and ask somebody else to put a ladder down in the hole, climb down in the hole with us and help us climb out of it. It's so, it's such an honorable, respectable thing to do that. And brother, that is why you are going places, man. And I'm really excited to be on the journey with you. I have loved talking to you. I, I want to talk to you again. I want to hang out with you. I want you to come to uh, continue to contribute to our community in any way that you'd be willing to, because I think that your mindset, your heart, your, the way in which you communicate what you're doing is very special. 
and and um, I'm I'm extremely happy that you followed through, and you're now reaping the rewards of your good, honest, hard work and humbleness, and um and har- and, and just perseverance to push through some of those tough times at the beginning. Tommy, the man, the myth, the legend coming all the way from Vietnam. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, honestly. Come back and see me. Let's do a follow-up episode in the very near future, okay? Will do. Will do. All right, man. Talk to you soon, buddy. Be safe. Bye-bye. Safe travels, brother. Thank you. All right, my friends. Go and follow Tommy over at TJ Side Hustle. And that's spelled, and that's on TikTok, T-E-E-J, J-A-Y, Side Hustle, T-J Side Hustle. He's also over on Instagram, so you can check him out there. T-J works from anywhere, okay? And that's just the letters T-J over on Instagram. T-J works from anywhere over on Instagram. My friends, today's been fun. Every morning has its own flavor, okay? This morning was a unique flavor that maybe... Some of you who are new here have not tasted before, and that's okay because we like to mix it up. We like to keep it fresh. We like to show different things. Sometimes the opportunities to uh, present themselves uh, for us to, um, you know, get a, a bust an old tool out of the tool belt. And y'all want to see the da- – okay. 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 I like to dance while I'm making money. I like to dance while I'm making money. I really do. I enjoy that. That's something that I really, truly enjoy. I'm glad you all are embracing my dance moves as well. Um, it's uh, It feels good. And I, I hope that you will do a little dance today um, and, uh, you know, really allow some of this to, to, to set in to uh, your mindset, to your heart, to your head, because, um, you know, there is no difference between me and these guests than you, my friends, except we're a little bit maybe crazier, a little bit more hard-headed, maybe a little bit more consistent. But as TJ said, um, it is a matter of sticking in there, you know, not quitting before the miracle happens, learning these skills, understanding the blueprint. So when you have the tool in your hands, you know how to use it. And um, and then going out there and using it and, and riding it until the damn wheels fall off, Okay. So my friends, love you all. Appreciate you. We'll be back here tomorrow for another episode. More value. Thank you, Gilberto and everybody for the wonderful feedback. Um, No stress with Jess. Thank you. You're awesome. Natasha with the heart. Monty, sweating it up over there. Awesome show. Thank you, Melissa. Pass the wave, says Karen. Um, Get it, Dave. Don't bust a hip. It's not Friday yet. Come on now. I'm trying to get a I'm trying to get that hip replacement. Okay. I'm trying to dance so hard. I need that replacement. All right, my friends. Thank you so much, Rosanna, for the the, the wonderful feedback. All of you. Uh Christos coming in all the way from Greece. Wonderful. So, so wonderful to have all of you on from around the world. Thank you for your feedback. Remember, if you want to get a text message reminder every time we go live. Text WUL to 813-296-8553. Again, WUL, the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. We'll send you a gentle, I like that word, gentle reminder at 10 a.m. Eastern time that we are going live, baby, and the party has started. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Get out of here. Peace.